Professor Wale Idris Ajibade van African Views geeft aan hoe het allemaal tot stand is gekomen om meneer Ronnie Brunswijk te bekronen tot koning van de Afro-Surinaamse cultuur. Hij is niet benoemd tot koning van de groep Afro-Surinamers in ons land. Wij voeren terug naar het moment met de professor van African Views. When we look at the issue with, uh, uh, when we spoke to the vice president, we asked why there are no representation. We realized that he cares about the people. He's already the vice president, but he cares about the people and he's a power, he has a political power and he also has that cultural interest. So we spoke to him and we thought, we, if we are going to develop Afro Suriname, then we needed somebody to lead it and it has to be cultural. Now, Afro Surinamese heritage is something that is yet non existent. Non existent. Because, and it's something that we cannot escape. Whether the maroon, whether the creole, whatever the case, everyone understands that they are Afro Surinamese. This identity is there, but nobody is really utilizing it because we are caught up in the old ways so this is something really new and what we thought and we thought very carefully about this we cannot make uh, the vice president a king of the people we don't have that right i mean even though monarchy is different mm -hmm. but we are not of Suriname. so what we have done which is within the right of the african people is to recognize the African culture, the African heritage in Suriname. And therefore, we needed to appoint a cultural leader to it in order to facilitate state a closer nexus to Africa, to facilitate a better opportunity of Suriname working directly with Africa, better logistics, and so on and so forth. We found a perfect man. And let me tell you, when we presented this case to the African people, uh, the, the culture, have to, they have to do an oracle. There's a spiritual prayer that they have to do that satisfies and confirms that this man is the right man. And I want to clear everybody's mind. What we have done is now made him the king of the people, but rather king of the heritage. This is a very big difference. We have done a great thing in front of everybody, giving him a great responsibility to help to develop, to lead the development of the afro surinamese culture, afro surinamese heritage. That means that we're going to now begin to put, whether it's the maroon, whether it's the creole, all, all kinds of, all even mix, anything that identifies with African, in whatever degree, begin to put it together in one place. I want us to remove impulse uh, the best we can and appeal to, appeal to our higher intelligence when we are having this conversation, but it's very sensitive. I have had many um, the, the effect of the coronation has been very challenging even on me. Many people have reached out to me, shown a lot of disdain and anger discontentment and all kinds of things like that and we have analyzed it in many ways so um, that's one of the reasons even i too wanted to talk to you and on that day uh, i did speak to the press about this so but uh, i understand that you know we have a diversity of people and diversity of perspective um, but before i get to some of the questioners. Let me address the issue of timing. Remember the global uh, impact on slavery and indentured labor ended on June 10th, and we were in Suriname until June 15th. So by the time we left Suriname, and we began to process, we, we continue to follow up 
on the uh, on the on what we learned and the outcome of the conference, which again is the importance of building the Afro Surinamese heritage. On July 1st is the 160th anniversary of um, the emancipation of slavery in Surinam. We were, we were supposed to be part of that event. Uh, we tried to bring some kings from Ghana to support it, but we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't. Time was uh, very short, um, but we, we tried. We tried, uh, but we couldn't. They didn't have visa. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a big, big, big problem. Uh, and these are part of the problems that we are trying to solve, okay? So from the 1st of July, we wanted to make sure that this coronation is relevant to the emancipation so that it is close to July 1st. So we wanted July 3rd, 4th, etc. That too would have been very soon, but it was what we call the Oracle that chose the date for the event, which is 777. This is July 7, and if you put 2023 together, you'll come up with a seven number. So we understood what this meant. This is African culture. So we um, we tried all our best because we're bringing people from different parts of Africa and different parts of the world together for this program. All our energy and our effort was concentrated on getting people there. We wanted to bring initially 10 kings, but we realized that we only had budget for about five kings only. So we pulled our resources together to get these kings here as soon as we possibly can. The Ghana king could not make it. Uh, the king, There was a king from Ghana that was supposed to come. This king, every, don't forget, as we're doing things here, they're doing things, of everybody's doing many things towards this program. Now, um, we needed to make sure that people are going to come before we start to broadcast, before we start to do the um, uh, 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 announcement. And the most important part of the announcement was ensuring that the Gamans would be present. All of them, because that was for this purpose as well, to unify them. Um, so by the time we got the uh, invitation out, it was already maybe the fourth or so. So we realized that's very short. And I don't know to what extent the vice president's staff disseminated this uh, flyer, uh, not, uh, this uh, invitation. I think it went to different cabinet members, uh, whatever it is, whoever they wanted to uh, invite. But for us, it was important that all the Gamans are there, including the Gamans in the Paramaribo from the city. When we arrived on the Seventh, actually, we arrived on the seventh. That's that's uh, see, we wanted to do the program on the seventh, but we arrived in Suriname on the seventh. That's a very you know, this is very difficult. So, because we realized that only two days before we had to change the date from the seventh to the eighth, but also we had to fulfill the oracle. So, the real, real coronation took, took place in a private ceremony on the seventh, okay that took place on the 7th. So we had to then do uh, a bigger one on the 8th, which is the ceremony. But the blessings for the ceremony started on the 7th. Uh, and we're very happy that we're able to do this. So for those who claim that they didn't know, I completely understand. Um, this is often how it is. Um, especially, don't forget there are a few factors here. The July 1st emancipation event, which is which lays the anchor, which we wanted to target and make sure that this coronation is close to, the development of the afro Surinamese heritage and the leadership, the cultural leadership of that development is very, very critical. You need somebody who is 
focus and based in Suriname, who could attract people in Suriname, who has resources and power, who needs to do something good for the people and yearns to do something good for the people. And now given the opportunity, this man now serves in two capacities, as the vice president, where he serves the whole of Suriname, and as the king of the Afro Suriname heritage that focuses on developing the Afro Suriname heritage. So there's a whole lot that needs to be done on that area. There's a lot of education about Africa. Um, one of the things that the uh, vice president is going to do that's going to be very important for Suriname is develop um, the Afro Surinamese um, Museum, Afro Surinamese Institute for research and, and all kinds of uh, necessary, um, you know, uh, 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 investigations and research that needed to be done. Um, a real institute, a full-fledged institute that was going to also provide opportunities for great ideas. Uh, also, the uh, museum is going to be very helpful to, for tourism, but also very helpful educationally for the people. Now, that's just the beginning. Don't forget now the beginning of the connection to Africa. I know you have an ambassador in Africa, which is stationed in Ghana, but that's only one country. Ghana, Africa has 55 states. And people from Suriname are not just from Ghana, they're from all Africa. We know that, okay? So it's very important that we understand that. The opportunity that we extend into Suriname is very immense. That's the, we, we, when we're talking about reparations, we don't have to wait for the Dutch to give us money. We have to do whatever we can to heal ourselves. And that's the steps that we're taking. We're talking about direct flight from, from Suriname to somewhere in Africa. We're talking about direct logistics. Suriname has the best ports in the Caribbean. It's been, it's been labeled for three times the best port service in, 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 in the whole of the Caribbean by the Caribbean Port Authority. Suriname can serve as a hub. Suriname can connect directly to Africa. It doesn't need to go to Europe to connect to Africa. Suriname has a direct connection to Africa. That's what we're bringing about. That Suriname, come on, you have a direct connection to Africa. Just like Suriname has a direct connection to India or to China or to Indonesia, that Suriname must demand that the African countries have a trade mission in Suriname, a diplomatic mission in Suriname. Suriname has only almost 10% of its land cultivated. 93% of the country is in Amazon forest. So there's a great opportunity to develop.